previous verses described our state of delusion. Our state of delusion consists of what we take as reality and we don't question it. What we take as reality, which is beyond dispute, is that there's a world out there being experienced by an individual here. And there are lots of different things in this world. It seems crazy to question this, doesn't it? But we shouldn't automatically assume that that feeling is correct, the feeling that it's crazy to question this. But that's what the previous verses have been doing. And verse 216 and 217 and 218 give an explanation for this delusion. They give an explanation for why we are so convinced in this understanding. So verse 216 says, The chitta in its essence is thoroughly pure, the manas is denied, and the manas is with the vijnanas. Habit energy is always casting out. So we've got some terms here which I hope you're familiar with. Chitta, manas, vijnanas. We've come across them quite a lot in the past. But I'll go over them again briefly here. So we've got this first one, the chitta in its essence is thoroughly pure. There are various shades of meaning to the word chitta. It normally means just mind. But here we should understand it as awareness, pure awareness. And what is this awareness? Well, you are aware. I don't think you deny that. You're aware of these words. You're aware of your situation. What does that mean? Without awareness, there would be no experience. Awareness is what makes you different from a camera or a microphone. camera picks up visual images, a microphone picks up sounds. They function in a similar way to our eyes and ears. And yet, there's more to us than being a mixture of a camera and a microphone, because we're aware of these things. We're aware of what we're seeing and of what we're hearing. So there's something more than simply the perception here. There's awareness. I'll come back to this in a moment. The manas is denied. Now the manas is our ordinary mind, it's our thinking mind. And it's saying here the manas is denied. It's denied awareness. It's denied the, this pure awareness. Because the manas is caught up with thinking about these perceptions, about what it sees and hears and so on. And this is what's meant by saying the manas is with the vijnanas. The vijnanas are what we are conscious of. We are conscious of sounds, of sights, of feelings, of smells and so on. This is what we're preoccupied with. This is what the manas, the mind, the everyday thinking mind is preoccupied with. It's preoccupied with this world that we're apparently perceiving. Habit energy is always casting out. The translators put its seeds in brackets here, but this is the, ha the habit energy is always looking outwards, always casting outwards. This is the habit energy of our attention, which is 
driven by the mind. So this is a state of affairs. And it even happens when we're dreaming. We create an external world. And our habit energy is casting out. It's interacting with the objects in that world. In dreams, in dreaming, we can see the exact mechanism which is going on. It's going on in the waking state as well. An external world is created and our energy is habitually casting outwards. Our attention is looking at things, is taking things in and seeing itself in terms of all this. So this is it. And this is further described in verse 217. The Alaya is released from the body. The Manas solicits the various paths of existence. The Vijnana is deluded with something resembling an objective world and perceiving it is befooled. The Alaya is released from the body. Well, the alaya can be understood here as synonymous with chitta, or it's chitta in its purest essence. And it says here that alaya is released from the body. Well, I think what this means really is the alaya is independent of the body. The body is part of this external world. We feel intimately connected with our body but it's part of the external world. But there's another way of understanding this. When we start practicing, when we start focusing on this pure awareness, focusing on this awareness, which is more than just perception, then this is liberation. We released we're released from the body of the senses. So we realize we're not simply a mechanism, a perceiving mechanism. We are awareness itself. So it should be possible to realize this. But the trouble is we're so habitually identifying with what we're perceiving. Is it possible just to come back to this awareness? Is it possible to just simply be awareness? I've described this realization in the past as coming back to a sense of being rather than just simply be aware of something. Be aware of me that's on the receiving end of it. It's not really me, of course, it's awareness. And there's one thing I want to consider here. What does this feel like? When you first stumble upon it, it can be very nice, blissful even. When the penny drops and you realize this awareness, it can be very wonderful and this feeling can last for a long time. But what can often remain after that feeling of bliss passes is a particular tone particular tone which might not be very blissful at all and this is the tone of your essential habit energy or your essential mood your fundamental mood tone and so when you're in this awareness you have to be careful that this mood tone doesn't hijack it and then you can see the bliss once again. But the bliss here is in this awareness, 
not in the realization, not simply in the mind's response to this awareness. So in realizing this, you have the opportunity to work with your moods on the most fundamental level. So this is very important. This is very important. It's almost as if you can reprogram yourself, reprogramming your habit energy. But let's finish this verse. So the alaya is released from the body. It's released from the body of perception. The manas solicits the various paths of existence. The manas is what tells us that this is real and this is what you have to get on with. These are the paths of existence. The vijnana is diluted with something resembling an objective world. And vijnana is the world picture that we build up through apparent perceptions. We say the reality is something out there, that these perceptions are indicative of something external. So we're diluted with something resembling an objective world and perceiving it, we're befooled. So this is what we've been looking at the last few verses. And the antidote to it is to understand this situation and to be enlightenment practitioners. And this means coming back to this awareness which within which everything arises. Just be aware, even if it's, for, even if it's only for a few seconds at a time. And in that awareness, check your sense of being, check your mood tone. And there might be something there to work with. Otherwise, you can just enjoy the bliss. So I'll finish this off with verse 218, which sums this up. What is seen is one's own mind. An objective world exists not. When one thus perceives that existence is an error, one even gets into suchness. So this is why I described as a sense of being suchness. It doesn't sound like very much perhaps. But what it means is we're no longer caught up in the delusion We're becoming stronger in ourselves. We're no longer caught up in our mood body. We've got access to unfettered liberation.